Fei Pinying Jiang. Chapter 12 Mid Autumn Festival Qi Yunruo waited for a long while for Su Ji to return, waited until the rumble of his stomach grew all the more audible. Coupled with the fact he had skipped his afternoon nap, to say he was exhausted wouldn't be a lie. Li Chen was currently speaking business matters with his advisors. That Qi Yunruo was still waiting had slipped Su Ji's mind. Upon arriving at the main chamber, they stood still there, surprised by the youth's appearance. Su Ji was quick to react. Young master Xiao Qi has yet to eat. Qi Yunruo nodded. With a smile, Su Ji went to prepare for the evening meal. Once Li Chen sat down, a maid servant brought over a basin of warm water. He washed his face and said, in addition to what Su Ji ordered, add a few extra dishes for these gentlemen. Understood. Hands cleansed and dried, Qi Yunruo made his way to sit at a desolate side of the table. He sneaked a peek at Li Chen. Fatigue hung on his face as he leaned against the backrest of his chair. I'll help you change clothes, said Qi Yunruo. All right. Li Chen rose to his feet for the inner chamber, the youth following suit. The maidservants prepared loose cotton robes. For a moment, Qi Yunruo gazed at the man before him while standing at the side. Then he knelt to the floor to help him remove his boots, exchanging them for cloth sandals. Were you looking for me? At the sound of his voice, Qi Yunruo looked up. Yes, to get your key to the treasury. Li Chen thought for a while about what Qi Nikan had said before. About the matter regarding Qi Yunruo managing the estate. A smile suddenly bloomed on his lips. How is everything so far? He told him the same thing he had told Su Ji. Although it's a lot of work, it's interesting. Li Chen's smile grew as he took in the image of Qi Yunruo. The eyes of the youth shone with joy. His fondness apparent. By the time they returned to the table outside, Li Chen already felt as if the stress and pressure weighing down on him prior had lessened. Then he noticed the dishes set out on the table. Why aren't there any radish strips? Su Ji bitterly smiled. Nowadays Her Highness, the Princess Consort, and Secondary Consort Wei are both fond of this dish, eating it for all three meals. For this reason, the chefs focus on bringing this dish to the two's residences. This slave has already instructed those responsible that from tomorrow forward, they must purchase more radishes to pickle. Quick as lightning, Qi Yunruo said, I also like this dish. Li Chen nodded. That the two women were pregnant gave him joy. The more children, the greater the fortune. He hoped that his sons would grow into outstanding men. That he would see his beautiful daughters marry into outstanding families. He glanced at his companion. Saw that the other's appetite was hearty. Larger than what Li Chen had seen Qi Yunruo have in the past. Su Ji stood to the side, expression subtle. Back then, Li Chen did not spend the night at Qi Yunruo's room. After he had moved out, Li Chen also did not visit. Yet their interactions seemed to point to a closer relationship. Once the two had sated their hunger, owing to Li Chen's desire to exercise, Li Chen personally went to unlock the door to the treasury. Then he called for people to help carry a few chests of silver for Qi Yunruo. After he had sent off the youth, Li Chen took a stroll to Beautiful Forest. Should this slave go ahead and announce your highness arrival, asked Su Ji. Li Chen shook his head. No need. I just want to have a chat with Ji Huan. Previously, you said that Consort Ji had invited Ji Huan to speak. That is correct. Young Master Ji Huan only stayed for a short while before leaving. Li Chen grunted in acknowledgement. Noticing his master's displeased expression, Su Ji said with a slight smile tugging on his lips, Today, Dr. Su checked the young master's pulse and said that young master has been healthy as of late. It's no longer like before, when he was always sick. Li Chen lightly sighed. Hopefully my son will continue to be robust and grow into a strong man. His gaze shifted to the moon above. In a few days, the mid-autumn festival would arrive. The Empress was Li Chen's birth mother and the Emperor's most respected legitimate wife. 
For his mother's sake, Li Chen added and consecrated a few eternal flames in the imperial temple. He had mulled over what to give as an offering, and had even consulted with Qi Nikan several times. The moment he arrived at Beautiful Forest, Ji Huan had just started his stroll around the premises, surprising the latter. You certainly have a lot of time on your hands, said Li Chen. Ji Huan smiled. I had a lot for dinner. Li Chen returned the smile, shaking his head, joining Ji Huan in his stroll. I heard that you let little Qi manage the estate. It was the princess consort's recommendation. After a moment of thought, Ji Huan said, I'm surprised. Little Qi doesn't look like a person that can work as a steward. Li Chen said, he looks like he enjoys it very much. Little Qi likes to be kept occupied. It doesn't matter the task. Once when he visited me, I asked him to help me organize my bookcase. He was more diligent than the servant I usually use. Li Chen arched a brow. His expression did not change. Early the next morning, Qi Yunruo sent out every inhabitant of Lakeside View House to deliver the monthly allowances. He recalled the words of Eunuch Qian yesterday, the eunuch that was in charge of patrol. Eunuch Qian had held a fly whisk. Yesterday this slave discovered a few shady things occurring behind your honored self's back. These wicked slaves thought that your honored self was young and ignorant, daring to slack off and indulge in alcohol and gambling all through the night. A displeased chuckle. If it were up to you, how would Eunuch Qian punish them? Eunuch Qian smiled. Different masters have different levels of severity for punishments of the same crime. When Consort Ji managed the estate, her punishments were severe. Few dared to cause trouble. When the Princess Consort was in power, those who were lazy and vile shaped up for a while, afraid that the new master would make examples of them. Now these servants' punishment will be up to your honored self. Qi Yunruo said, Who should I keep an eye out for? Eunuch Qian's response was to present a booklet. The longer Qi Yunruo looked at it, the darker his expression became. The day before, he had not known why so many people had grouped up together during the night. Now he was aware. A steward eunuch from Winter Plum Courtyard and a few eunuchs from Frost Autumn Courtyard had been indulging in alcohol and gambling. The amount of crimes they had committed was many. In this estate, there are precedents for reward and punishment, Qi Yunruo set down the booklet, schooling his expression back to neutral. The smile on eunuch Qian's lips never faltered as he watched the other party. Then let's go with what young master Qi decides. And Qi Yunruo had put eunuch Qian's teachings to heart. Those who committed crimes from Frost Autumn Courtyard were merely small fries. Yet this was not the case with Winter Plum Courtyard the perpetrator being eunuch Yunbao. In the past, he had looked down on Qi Yunruo. This matter many people in Winter Plum Courtyard knew. Some people felt that Qi Yunruo was using this as an excuse to take revenge. Yunbao was relieved of his management duties and given 20 strikes of the rod, losing all his face. The moment Nanny Song learned of this, she ran over like the wind, face a shade of metallic green. Chi Nikan had sent her to Lakeside View House to monitor Chi Yunruo. Early in the morning, she had followed along with the other servants to deliver the monthly allowances, and used the opportunity to relay Chi Yunruo's actions to Chi Nikan. Who knew that a moment later, such a huge thing would occur? Now Nanny Song stood in front of the youth, her glare sharp enough to pierce through clothes. You really show your true colors now. You're capable of doing anything. Qi Yunruo remained silent, sitting at the desk as he went over the estate's previous ledgers. The fire in Nanny Song's heart grew all the more wilder, the heat pulsing in her veins. She shouted, Do you think you are the master of this estate? That even the princess consort is nothing to you? Before his highness has even favored you, you already don't know how high the sky is, how wide the earth stretches. Let me tell you. Once Her Highness regains the management power, let's see how you can survive. Then what does Nanny Song propose, said Chi Yunruo. Eunuch Yunbao is one of Her Highness' servants of great use. What do you think? He dropped his gaze. 
slowly said, those who are to be punished have been punished. Those who are to be beaten have been beaten. Even if you discuss with me now, it is already of no use. From now on, the only thing that can be done is to have Eunuch Gao control the servants better. Eunuch Yunbao isn't the only useful person at the princess consort's side. Keeping such a dishonest servant close will give her highness a bad name. As soon as Nanny Song opened her mouth, the temperature in the surrounding area fell. Third young master really has a way with words. Seeing that he had kept silent, the old female servant snorted and left directly for Winter Plum Courtyard. Unlike Nanny Song, Chi Nikan had a clearer view of the situation and a sharper mind. Although in her opinion, Chi Yunruo was a person who failed to appreciate kindness, she was more suspicious as to why Eunuch Qian had reported the case to this younger brother of hers. Eunuch Qian was in charge of patrol and supervised the interior eunuchs and maid servants. He did not have much of a relationship with Chi Yunruo, and certainly did not cross paths with him often. Chi Nikan had from the start found Eunuch Qian observant, able to see through the hearts of others. While suspicious of Eunuch Qian, she was still upset at Chi Yunruo for losing face for her in public. If he had instead gone and informed her of Eunuch Yunbao's crimes beforehand, this situation could have been avoided. To pacify one of her capable servants, Chi Nikan had sent people to give Eunuch Yunbao a box of medicinal ointment. She had a servant let him know that once he had completely healed, she would return his prior position and responsibilities to him. Extremely grateful, Eunuch Yunbao had one of the servants send a message to his master. The note read, This slave thanks your highness, the princess consort, for your grace and benevolence. This slave was set up. Those wicked things forced this slave to participate and then led Eunuch Qian over. There must be someone trying to use this excuse to go against your highness. After reading the note, Chi Nikan's expression remained neutral. She slowly said, Tell Yunbao to take his time to heal. Those who had lured Yunbao to gamble were people belonging to Consort Chi. What a pity that Chi Nikan could not take back the power to manage the estate from Chi Yunruo. Consort Wei was with child. She also could not rely on tertiary Consort Li, since the prince held a low opinion of her. Concubine Yi's status was too humble, as were the rest of the concubines in the estate. She inhaled deeply in her heat. There were only a few months left. Chi Yunruo. If he was willing to offend others, then let him do so. Wait until he lost all his power. Then he'd know what true, unadulterated fear was. Chi Nikan smiled with ridicule. Once he was forced to the precipice of death, who could he blame? The next day, word of the servants' crimes and subsequent punishments spread through the entire estate like wildfire. Concerned, Ji Huan took a visit to Chi Yunruo's residence. Expression neutral, Chi Yunruo said, Older brother Ji needn't feel worried about me. I know what to do. Ji Huan sighed. You actually have the guts to offend others. If you keep doing this from now on, you'll have offended everyone in the estate. A soft sigh also left Chi Yunruo's lips. What else could I do? Ji Huan knew the youth before him wasn't a ruthless person. For a moment, he was at loss for words. Since they gave me this responsibility, then I should do it to the best of my ability. Otherwise, what's the point? Older brother Ji, you don't have to worry about me. How could I not? In fact, Ji Ro's actions and thoughts worried him the most. Such a foolish woman. Did she really think no one was aware she had been the one to incite the current situation? On Chi Yunruo's lips was a blossoming smile. That's fine too. Presently, I have power. Starting now, no one will dare to cause trouble at the surface. Once Her Highness has a month of rest after giving birth, I will return the privilege of managing the estate. But with several months left, I cannot just stand there weakly until the end. Ji Huan was speechless. Once Chi Nikan gave birth, he would have already returned to his home estate. At that time, who could protect Chi Yunruo? He coughed once, embarrassed. He sat down next to Chi Yunruo and said softly, 
there's something I'd like to ask you. Hmm. That night. I heard that, Ji Huan felt a little awkward. It's just what I heard, but... Her Highness wanted you to. His Highness. Then what did you? Um. Oh. Chi Yun Ruo nodded. Ji Huan reached out and helplessly patted his head. I'm just asking. Chi Yun Ruo tilted his head but said nothing. You don't want to. After a moment of thought, Chi Yun Ruo said, I don't really have an opinion about it. Ji Huan sighed. He seemed to be sighing a lot lately. It's something that will eventually happen. Expressionless, Chi Yun Ruo lowered his head. I can see that you and the princess consort aren't close. The other people in the estate won't be friendly with you either. Apart from relying on his highness, who else can you rely on? I see you as my younger brother, but unfortunately I will be leaving soon. In the future, I won't have the opportunity to help you in the estate. At that time, what can you do? Yet Chi Yun Ruo only smiled. I'll deal with it when the time comes. I don't know what to say to put some sense into you, said Ji Huan, feeling helpless in his heart. Then let's end this topic here, brother. I'll bring you to the second floor to admire the lotuses. And with that, Ji Huan was pulled up the stairs. On the second floor, leaning over the balcony, he could see the lotuses that had yet to bloom. Their leaves stretched out generously, their petals sharp in their unblossomed state. Chi Yun Ruo said, we mustn't pluck them once they've blossomed. That way, we can eat the lotus seed pods. No wonder this place is called Lakeside View House. The scenery and flora here are the best. If brother likes it, then visit more often, said Chi Yun Ruo. During a hot summer day, the interior of my house is the coolest. All right. On the day of the mid-autumn festival, Chi Nikan woke up and had her makeup applied early in the morning. Today would be the day she brought gifts to the Imperial Palace. She put on robes of several layers and a shawl exclusive to first-rank honored ladies. It was the hottest day of the year. The moment she had left the main chambers of her courtyard, she felt the heat hit her straight on. Gritting her teeth, she said, bring the small palanquin. Once she had arrived at the Imperial Palace, she mingled and chatted with the other noble personages. The Empress took pity on her heavily pregnant condition and told her to rest in the Palace of Bright Sunday. Chi Nikan felt grateful. After thanking the Empress, she left for that place. Her birth mother was a first-rank lady, and as such her status was high, high enough to accompany her to sit. With a smile, Countess Ziang said, Her Majesty, the Empress, cares about you. But Chi Nikan merely sighed. Her Majesty, the Empress, treats everyone the same. She has never shown a bias towards me. She also doesn't spoil His Highness. In fact, I've heard that she cares about the fourth prince the most. Countess Ziang said, no matter how lackluster her affections for Prince Chun, he is still her full-blooded son. His identity is noble. The Empress Dowager raised Prince Chun so he isn't that close to the Empress. However, his heart will always remember who his mother is. What is Her Majesty, the Empress reputation? It's that she treats all the princes the same, whether they are from the legitimate line or not. Everyone praises her for her conduct, so it's impossible for her not to like her own son. You just need to act on filial piety. Eventually, she will acknowledge your goodwill. Chi Nikan nodded and stroked her abdomen with a smile. Not a word left her lips. Once all the guests had arrived, Chi Nikan and Princess Consort Jing led the guests inside the main hall with their gifts. Shortly after, Noble Consort Yuan brought the imperial concubines to kowtow to the Empress. The Empress sat down prim and proper. A gentle smile on her face. May all the sisters quickly rise. Since Imperial Concubine Jing was with child, she had gotten up first. Everyone else performed the full ceremony before rising. Gaze cold as frost, Chi Nikan watched as Martianus Baikang brought her daughter to pay respects to noble consort Yuan. 
Noble Consort Yuan then brought the future Princess Consort Qing to see the Empress. She smiled. Your Majesty, look at this young girl. Truly a sight for the eyes and adorable. The Empress also smiled. Grasping her hand gently, she pulled the young lady to her and said a few words. The future Princess Consort Qing, Miss Zhang, was at a tender age. She was petite. Whether noble consort Yuan truly liked her was anyone's guess. That said, she kept praising Qi Nikan for being fortunate. Due to her young age, Miss Zhang did not know how to conceal her emotions. As she witnessed her future mother-in-law praising another woman, her upset was suddenly visible. After a moment, she excused herself to change clothes. Right before she left, however, she shot a glare in Chi Nikan's direction. Chi Nikan did not respond to the provocation, and slightly smiled as she sat right beneath the Empress. Once the group of guests entered the Imperial Garden, Miss Zhang made sure to stay far away from Chi Nikan. Instead, she stuck by close to Princess Consort Jing. As she held the other party's hand, she did not know what to say. During their stroll, the Empress received the prostrates of the courtiers in the distance. A few princes came forward to kowtow to her. The smile on her face grew brighter. When her gaze fell upon Li Chen, she suddenly paused. The Empress Dowager was very old and as such did not come to participate in the festivity. She also rarely called people over to her palace. The Empress led the procession right outside the Palace of Merciful Peace to kowtow. After that they left to prepare for the noon meal. After finishing all the procedures, Chi Nikan was exhausted. She couldn't help but look at Li Chen and saw that his gaze toward Palace of Merciful Peace was very complex. His heart was full of yearning, gratitude, and guilt. Empress Dowager Lan was so legendary that the annals left behind described her character in colorful and detailed language. She had been widowed at a young age, and in a scenario where the front was full of wolves and the back tigers, she was still able to clear a path full of blood for her only son. Later on, she raised the next generation's Princess Royal, Li Yao, and the second Imperial Prince, Li Chen. Once they were older, she retreated to her residence and rarely left. She didn't take on guests. Even Chi Nikan, her new granddaughter-in-law, had to kowtow outside her palace. As Li Chen left and tore his gaze away from the Palace of Merciful Peace, his heart throbbed with love and pain. Grandmother End chapter Fei Pinying Jiang Chapter 13 Lotus Porridge Prince Qing was scheduled to get married after the mid-autumn festival. During Qi Yunruo's second month of stewardship, he worked to prepare for this event. The prince estate did not have a precedent for sending wedding gifts to the imperial family. As such, Qi Yunruo searched for the records depicting what Prince Jing had given during Li Chen's wedding. He used it as a reference, adding some items, removing some others. He edited the gift list many times, before preparing to let Li Chen take a look. Because Qi Yunruo never consulted with Nanny Song about anything, it drove the old servant furious. Despite this, he acted as though he didn't hear any of her complaints, solely focusing on his responsibilities. Now that Chi Nikan had lent out Nanny Song, the latter could not go to Winter Plum Courtyard often to complain. It made her feel powerless. The act of sending gifts to Prince Qing's wedding was an important task. She did not believe Chi Yunruo could handle it by himself. Just wait until His Highness lectures him. Then let's see if he will still refuse to seek help from me. Humph. At Lakeside View House, the servant in charge of delivering messages and external affairs was Yuji. The one in charge of the interior was Lulan. She prepared Chi Yunruo's food and drink and serviced him at his meals, among other things. That said, Nanny Song wanted to promote Li Yisu in order to deal with Lulan. However, Lulan wasn't an ordinary female official. She was a proper sixth-rank female official of the Imperial Palace. Although Nanny Song believed her own seniority to be higher, she did not dare to go against her for no reason. Much less Li Yisu. 
Lee Yeso was currently at Lakeside View House. She was in charge of teaching the lower rank servant girls. Originally, Lee Yeso pitted her master. She was also not as competent as Lulan at her duties. As time passed, she felt less able to compete with her colleague. Taking advantage of that, Nanny Song said, Young lady, you're in the position to easily attend to the master. Back in our old household, each of you eight girls with the name of Li Yu were capable. To attend to third young master is to have wronged you. Your current responsibilities aren't those of a first-rank servant girl. Embarrassment painted Li Yiso's cheeks red. Nanny doesn't know my suffering. Master does not trust me. What can I do about that? If Master cares for me just a little, I'll be able to stand up straight and compete with Lulan. But Master is quite fond of her. So there's nothing I can do. If nothing were to occur, Master would be unaware of it. Nanny Song's words were but a mere mumble. But if something does happen, then Master would see for himself who his most loyal servants are. Li Yiso's heart trembled. Then she couldn't help but to consider those words. Nanny Song had a point. These past few days, her master had offended a lot of people. If it caused his highness annoyance, Lulan would no longer be as attentive to him. However, Li Yiso would still be there, and she would stay loyal and work diligently for Qi Yunruo. Today Li Chen was off duty. As such, Qi Yunruo made a trip to the forecourt, bringing the list of wedding gifts to see him. Su Ji greeted him. His Highness is discussing matters with his advisors in the outer study. Please wait in His Highness main chamber. All right, thank you, said Qi Yunruo with a smile. War had suddenly broke out in Baikiang. Debate struck the court like a monsoon, so much so that Li Chen had to consult with his advisors on his day off. During the break to their meeting, Su Ji said to Li Chen, Young Master Xiao Qi has sent the list of gifts to Prince Qing's wedding. Li Chen grunted in acknowledgement. He rose to his feet. May the gentleman wait a few moments. This prince will return soon. His Highness can leave as he wants. Li Yu stood up and stretched his back, his eyes darting left and right for a moment. Then he followed after Li Chen. Su Ji smiled but uttered not a word. Once Li Chen saw Qi Yunruo, he naturally sat next to him and received the list. After he finished going over it, he said, Explain this to me. I've used Prince Jing's wedding gifts to your highness as a reference. Among those gifts, there were one box of fox pelts and one box of mink pelts, each containing nine pieces. For Prince Jing's wedding, I've changed the pelts to Suo Embroidery, Cloud Brocade, Ling Luo, Snow Satin, Xiao Wan, and Wool. There's also porcelain, medicine, eight pieces of treasure, six sets of male accessories, 450 kilograms of silver, and 30 kilograms of gold. Li Chen set the list down. Not bad. Subtract 50 kilograms of silver and half the gold. Then tell the storeroom to prepare them. After Su Ji received the list, he made for the door. As he stepped through the doorway, he saw Li Yu, who was sneaking around. He helplessly said, Young Master Yu, your honored self is giving me trouble again. Li Yu smiled. And then he shouted, Cousin, I'm coming in. Qi Yunruo eyed the person entering the room, his gaze full of curiosity. The other party was a youth about 18 to 19 years old, a sturdy body and tall stature. Qi Yunruo had heard the person say cousin but didn't recognize him. For this reason, he kept quiet. Li Yu glanced at Qi Yunruo. Joy apparent on his face, he asked, Who are you? Li Chen side-eyed his cousin. Why are you asking that? But Li Yu seemed completely at ease. From my experience, cousin never leaves while a meeting is in session. Nor does he ever call a concubine over. That's why I was curious as to what made you step out. Embarrassment flaring in the pit of his stomach, Qi Yunruo lowered his head and tried to sneak a peek at Li Chen. Li Chen called Li Yu to sit down. His smile cold. 
if it really were one of my concubines and you charged right in like that, I'd think that your brain didn't mature with your age. Even if it were one of your concubines, I would naturally treat them like a sister-in-law, said Li Yu. Who is this young master? He stared at Qi Yunruo curiously. Your Highness, I will return first, said Qi Yunruo. A smile graced Li Chen's lips. All right. These days the estate is busy. Little Qi needs to watch out for your health. If you feel tired, then rest properly. I understand. Qi Yunruo did not look at Li Yu, nodding at Li Chen before leaving. After he left, Li Yu asked, was that the young master of Count Ziang's estate? The princess consort's younger brother. Hearing his cousin merely hum, Li Yu said, in the past I saw that Count Ziang had a burly figure. How could he have such a thin and delicate son? Not all of Count Ziang's sons are robust and burly. Little Qi is still young and hasn't matured yet. Has cousin finished preparing the list of gifts for Prince Qing's wedding? Gaze aimed at Li Yu, Li Chen arched a brow. Perhaps your brother and father have finished their gift list and are already on their way to the capital to deliver the gifts. It's unknown whether it would be Li Yang or Li Yao that's coming. Li Yu smiled. Jiangnan is a rich place. My brothers are wealthy and plump. Yet only I am skinny from living in your estate. Who knows whether my brothers would be heartbroken after seeing me again. Li Chen turned his gaze toward the sky, too lazy to say anything. But Li Yu just laughed. Such a little beauty actually belongs to elder cousin. He he. Really, really, he sighed. The emperor was an advocator of war. In the past, there had been a civil official who, after finding it difficult to keep the world in peace, felt that disbanding the military and removing the posts of martial officials would prove the best course of action. Yet the emperor had coldly said, so you want us to give money, beautiful women, and superior breed horses as tribute to the wolves in the west. That high-ranking official had gritted his teeth before saying, what this official meant was that our country is powerful. Even if we lose a few things, if we can receive some peace we will have a period of growth. The civilians will live in peace and contentment. The businessmen will roll in business. After a year, we will gain back what we lost. Since beloved minister cares about the civilians so much, then we will bestow your daughters a political marriage and send your wealth to the Chanyu of the Qiang people. We will send your beloved steeds to our enemy generals, which would later be used to cause trouble at our border. After that, no one in the court ever mentioned political marriages again. The last time the Qiang people came to sow discord was six years ago. At that time, something happened that had insulted the entire nobility. The emperor kneeled in the imperial ancestral hall for three days. Back then, Li Chen had only been 14 years old, and he vowed that he would definitely eliminate the Qiang people one day in order to officially bring back his most beloved elder sister. Princess Changping, Li Yao. In September, the emperor let the old general, Situ Su, lead 200,000 of the best troops to battle. Their destination was the border. They were to support the general guarding Yusha Gate, Sidi. The emperor brought all the imperial princes to the city gates to send them off. The emperor clasped hands with Situ Su, and said, Beloved Minister, whether we can have a good year will be up to you. Situ Su once again bowed. Tears in his eyes, he said, this minister will definitely not disappoint your majesty. Meanwhile, Prince Ching looked run down. The second time he had asked to lead troops to battle, he received his imperial father's heavy scolding. That his reasons were selfish and not for the good of the people. Li Chen sighed in his heart. In the end, he never spoke up about wanting to command an army and fight. He watched as Situ Su's figure shrank into the distance, worry striking his heart all of a sudden. To his side stood Prince Jing. What is second imperial brother worried about? To which Li Chen forced a smile on his face. Elder brother. Prince Jing said, if Situ Su crushes Bai Kiang in one go, we will no longer be apprehensive. Let's hope this will be the case. After that, 
Li Chen returned to his estate. Made a trip to beautiful forest. He sat down quietly, wanting to speak with Ji Huan. However, instead of seeing his companion, he was told that Ji Huan went to Lakeside View House. The reason, to admire the lotuses. Li Chen was shocked. There's actually lotuses in this season. Yui Iyer stood there surprised for a second. Then she said, yes. This slave remembers now that young master Ji went to eat lotus porridge with young master Xiao Qi. The season for viewing lotus flowers at their most magnificent had passed. Peering over the bridge, one would find the bottom of the pond to be filled with grey. Grey leaves, grey petals, grey dirt. Qi Yunruo and Ji Huan were trying out a new product of the year, lotus porridge. It was warm to the tongue with rock sugar stirred in. The days had yet to grow cold. The two chatted by the pond's edge. Because Qi Yunruo lacked leisure time, he ate his porridge while preparing for the estate's autumn allotment. Fortunately, Ji Huan had things to consider and didn't feel too troubled by his companion's lack of attention. He stirred his lotus porridge without a word. The masters of the estate would receive their new sets of autumn garments first. In Winter Plum Courtyard, Chi Nikan had her own textile workshop. The other concubines would have their measurements taken at the communal textile workshop. There they would tell the older female servants what color and material they preferred. If the master requested, the servants must also craft jewelry that matched their master's clothes. Or they would purchase them from the market. Every year, the imperial palace and other large estates would send Chi Nikan jewelry appropriate for a princess consort. Rarely did she need people to buy jewelry from the outside. The autumn allotment for the servants was even simpler. Just abiding by precedent was enough. Once Chi Yunruo finished reading every courtyard's allotment list, he read them again. And then he stamped them for approval. When Li Chen arrived at the pond, the other two had yet to notice him. He stood behind Chi Yunruo, reading each line. Then he asked, What about you? Chi Yunruo nearly jumped from fright. Ji Huan almost knocked over his bowl of porridge. Li Chen took the booklet from Chi Yunruo's hand and smiled. I wouldn't have thought that you would put so much consideration into this. Chi Yunruo smiled embarrassingly. Staring at his bowl of lotus porridge, he asked, Does your honored self want a bowl? Hum? All right. Lulan went to fetch another serving. This slave sees that your highness expression is pale. How about this slave add some brown sugar? Li Chen nodded. Let's go with that. Then he sat on the chair that Yuji had just brought over. That Lulan seemed familiar with Li Chen made Li Yisu feel even worse inside. It was apparent to Ji Huan that Li Chen was extremely exhausted. After thinking for a while, he understood that the origin of Li Chen's exhaustion and worry stemmed from the unrest in Baikiang. Meanwhile, Qi Yunruo's gaze fell upon the two of them and he said, It looks like there's one more month before your highness' twenty-first birthday. Are we to follow last year as an example of how to celebrate? Li Chen was shocked. Cut it by half. The princess consort and consort Wei were both with child. There was also the situation at Baikiang. As such, he did not want such a grand birthday celebration. This I already know, said Qi Yunruo. Who should be invited? Just this prince's brothers. Understood. Having already packed his luggage, Ji Huan couldn't help but feel the telltale tremors of worry in his heart. Even if the prince did not end up favoring Little Qi, if Little Qi could stand on his own two feet it would be enough. After a few years, the prince should let him leave the estate. Little Chi wasn't someone who could take the imperial exams and enter officialdom. For this reason, the best case scenario was for him live freely and with wealth. Later, Chi Yunruo gradually sent over the autumn season's allotment to the other courtyards. Yet, trouble still brewed. Consort Ji saw that the items she received were worse than those of the previous year. She sneered, throwing everything to the ground. His own sister is pregnant so he no longer places us secondary consorts in his eyes? What does he think he is? 
Consort G's maidservant, Pei Air, kneeled on the side. Without a word, she picked up the items from the floor. Last time he had the guts to hit the people from Frost Autumn Courtyard. And this time, he tries to deceive me with these inferior goods. Did he think I was too arrogant before? Pei Air, throw these things at his face. Pei Air hesitated before saying, Master, there's still the princess consort. So what about it? Who's like her and has a personal servant girl to make her clothes, 182 crates of dowry, and enough Ling Luo to last a whole lifetime? This slave has checked Consort Wei's side, and their allotment is similar to ours. Consort Wei is a cowardly person. Apart from daring to argue with me, she won't speak poorly in the Princess Consort's presence. If I were like her, I would have been eaten long ago. A low-ranked servant girl rushed into the room. She whispered a few words into Consort G's ears. The moment the servant girl had finished speaking, Consort G's expression became even more unsightly. Furious, she said, the things I received were even worse than those of Consort Wei. Consort Wei's inner garments are made of the highest grade snow satin. Her outer garments are made of either Suo embroidery or cloud brocade. Pei Air was at a loss for words. She muttered, it's because Consort Wei is pregnant. Humph. When I was with child, I was still managing the estate. When did you see me using anything good? This situation, won't be settled so easily. End chapter. Fei Pinying Jiang. Chapter 14. House Full of Demons. Regarding the new autumn clothes, Qi Yunruo arranged for them to be made according to rank. That said, Qi Nikan took the initiative to inform him of Consort Wei's pregnancy, and that her clothes must be made with the best materials. On the other hand, Consort Ji's clothes were still made to abide by protocol. Back when Consort Ji had managed the household, although she had never asked the textile workshop to use better quality material for her clothes, the supervisors were clever and naturally would do so to please her. After the princess consort had entered the estate, these same supervisors were afraid that others would call them ruthless, that others would accuse them of being too powerful. As such, when the princess consort first arranged for the spring season's clothes, they used the best materials for the higher rank concubines. However, this time the estate's principal wife and secondary consort Wei were both pregnant. It was possible that they would both give birth to a son. Not only that, but Qi Yunruo was managing the estate, and he was a strict and unbiased person. He didn't give face to even the princess consort's people. Therefore, the servants working in the textile workshop only used common materials for consort Ji's autumn clothes. Qi Yunruo's current status was ambiguous. There was no protocol surrounding what he should wear. He felt that as long as he had enough clothes it was enough. This time, he only wanted two sets of outer robes. While the servants measured him, he didn't specify any preference for material. He also was not very knowledgeable of such things. The textile workshop decided on its own to use the best embroidered brocade for his outer robes. One was a shade of sapphire. One was a light yellow. The moment Consort Ji's people came to throw her allotment of clothes and jewelry in Qi Yunruo's face, he stood in shock. Pei Er's expression was one of reluctance, whereas Consort Ji's steward eunuch directly said, Young Master Qi really does not want to give our master any face. Our master cannot wear such things in public. You can keep it for yourself. Qi Yunruo furrowed his brow. He slowly said, what is Consort G unsatisfied about? The steward eunuch broke into a cold smile. Young Master Chi, just look at the material used for your own clothes. Now compare it to the material used for our master's things. Everything has been done according to protocol. The eunuch acted as if he were listening to a huge joke. Protocol? Her Highness, the Princess Consort, gave stewardship to her dowry escort who was also her brother. Amen. Is this what they teach as protocol in Count Ziang's estate? This slave dares to ask, which man is managing Count Ziang's estate? Qi Yunruo sucked in a deep breath, 
face betraying helplessness. In his heart, the most important thing wasn't that the eunuch had insulted Count Ziang's estate, but how to get Consort Ji's people to leave. The eunuch saw that he wasn't talking, eyes sinister and ruthless. Ah, this slave has forgotten. Count Ziang isn't interested in men sexually. Could it be that a number one courtesan or a regular courtesan manages that estate? Humph! What young master Chi has been taught since young should not be how to manage a household, but how to serve men. All of a sudden, Chi Yunruo lifted his head. His eyes were wide. He squeezed the armrest with all his strength, knuckles glowing white. The steward eunuch wasn't the slightest bit afraid. Realizing he had hit Chi Yunruo's sore spot, his expression grew excited. Humph! Since the rules have been muddled since the beginning, young Master Chi is just targeting my master. How is that fair? Chi Yunruo slowly rose to his feet, expression cold enough to freeze. Is young Master Chi angry? This slave did not tell any lie. Could it be that young Master Qi mother is from Xia House? Pei Er saw that the situation had grown strange. A moment later, she heard a scream. Chi Yunruo had actually grabbed the tray with the tea set from the table and hurled a cup full of steaming tea at the eunuch's forehead. Upon collision, the eunuch collapsed to the ground. His chest shook from anger, one hand supporting his weight on the table. His mind grew dizzy, almost to the point where he couldn't see what stood before him. The steward eunuch threw a huge fuss as he got back on his feet. Meanwhile, Pei Er jumped from fright, so afraid that she couldn't even utter a word. At this point, Lulan had rushed over to support Chi Yunruo to sit. Li Yisu hesitated for a second, before walking faster than usual out of Lakeside View House. Just you wait, shouted the steward eunuch. Then he returned to Frost Autumn Courtyard with his injury in plain sight. In fact, he wanted to show off the bloody injury, to let everyone know what had happened to him. But most importantly, to let secondary consort G.C. Pei Er's face was pale. In her opinion, the situation had went out of control. One hour prior. After consort G's steward eunuch had prepared to make things even with Chi Yunruo, he went to the outhouse meant for the interior eunuchs. And he heard one of the lower-ranked eunuchs say, that young Master Chi is ferocious. In your opinion, do you think Eunuch Xia would get any benefits out of the situation? Another one said, Master Consort Ji originally had her eyes on one of the maid servants for the task. However, she used Eunuch Xia instead, who is a steward eunuch. In the master's eyes, he is not much different from us lower-ranked eunuchs. If he can act harshly, show off his power, then he can suppress young Master Chi until he can no longer recover. This situation has both pros and cons. Also, as Master Consort Ji's personal maidservant, older sister Pei Er cannot personally argue with young Master Chi. Li Yisu kneeled before Chi Nikan, and with much difficulty, she relayed what had happened. With a neutral expression, Chi Nikan said, it split his forehead open. Yes. Eunuch Xia was bleeding from the head. Chi Nikan said coldly, currently, he is the one managing the estate. He must be responsible for his own actions. A frown slid its way across Li Yuyu's face. Li Yisu, Her Highness, the Princess Consort, is getting further into her pregnancy and His Highness has already ordered that if it isn't a big issue, she should not be disturbed. But look at you. You even come and report to us the matter of third young master hitting an insignificant eunuch. In your heart, third young master's hardships are more important than her highness. Also, third young master has done everything on his own volition. Her highness is afraid of making things awkward for third young master, and now that he has encountered trouble, he wants the princess consort to support him. Li Yisu suddenly felt panicked. She took in the impatient appearance of her eldest miss. Her eyes held back tears as she rose to her feet and ran off. Once they could no longer see Li Yisu's figure, Li Yu by side. She indeed is not loyal to the same person we are. Li Yisu really cannot do what is right anymore. Chi Nikan slowly said, 
a servant will become like its master. Consort Ji was furious. In her mind, she had been severely wronged. Yet in the end, Chi Yunruo dared to put his hands on the servants she had sent to reclaim justice for herself. He had injured her people. He definitely had a lot of guts. Eunuch Xia sobbed as tears and snot ran down his face. But no matter what we say, he is still a master. Whether this slave spoke nicely or poorly, it didn't matter. He even talked badly about your honored self, secondary consort Ji. This slave could not help but say a few mean things because of this, yet he grabbed something from his side and threw it at me. The tea was even steaming. Consort Ji narrowed her eyes. Her gaze was sinister and ruthless. If we don't get rid of him, the people of the prince estate will copy him. Then who would put this secondary consort in their eyes by then? Come noon, once Li Chen returned to the estate, Eunuch Xia bandaged his forehead and kneeled before him. May your highness come see our master. These past few days your honored self has not visited and our master has been bullied to death. Li Chen arched a brow. What happened? May your honored self come see the secondary consort first. Li Chen sighed. Then he directly made for Frost Autumn Courtyard. Eunuch Xia lowered his head, his eyes revealing a smile from his plan bearing fruit. However, Su Ji knew every detail of the situation. It's just that he did not react as fast as Eunuch Xia. Watching as Li Chen left, he sighed lightly and followed suit. Consort Ji's face was free of makeup, eyes red. She dressed plainly, her clothes made of common cloth, her only hairpin made of common wood. She kneeled at the entrance of her residence, and Li Chen had heard her sobs since a while ago. He went to help her to her feet and asked, Ro Er, what happened? The moment Consort Ji heard the prince say the nickname he used to call her, she felt the small wrongs she had received grow to the maximum. She leaned against his chest and sobbed loudly. May your highness cast off this concubine. Li Chen sighed. What on earth happened? Then he turned to Pei Er. Fetch some warm water for your master to wash her face. What kind of servant are you? You actually let your master kneel in such cold weather. Consort Ji did not stop crying. Eunuch Xia's eyes darted left and right, expression full of mourning. He kneeled to the ground and said, May your highness try to understand and sympathize with us. Our master has been severely wronged. After young master Chi started managing the estate, he has not treated us well, punishing us often and rewarding us rarely and he even skimps on our things. Regarding this matter, this slave does not want to speak too much. However, this time our master's new autumn clothes were not much different in quality from the maidservants. Our master considered for your highness' sake, and as such was unwilling to make this matter public. But this slave could not hold it in and went to argue with young master Chi. Who knew that young master Chi would harm this slave like this? Li Chen glanced at Su Ji, who had his head lowered. Then he shifted his gaze back to Eunuch Xia. It was young Master Chi who did this. Consort Ji's sobs grew even louder. Eunuch Xia said, the people at Lakeside View House can act as my witness. If this slave spoke even a lick of lie, then may heaven strike this slave down. This concubine is petty and low, and cannot compare to Her Highness, the Princess Consort said Consort Ji. Yet when it's all said and done, this concubine has attended your honored self for over three years and has given your highness Jing air. Now this concubine cannot even protect the servants that serve me loyally. Your highness. Li Chen patted Consort Ji's shoulders. He slowly said, if this is truly the case, then this prince will take action for you. Consort Ji's heart trembled. She realized the situation did not play out as she had expected. The prince's tone was too insipid. Li Chen rose to his feet. This prince will now check on Little Chi. If Little Chi really acted arrogantly, this prince will not let Ro Er be wronged. Su Ji. This slave is present, Su Ji quickly said. Open the storage. Bestow consort Ji 20 bolts of various colors of Ling Luo and two boxes of jewelry. 
This slave will do as ordered. Li Chen said to Consort Ji, Rest well. This prince will return to visit you on another day. Then he directly made for Lakeside View House. On the way, Su Ji dared not to breathe even too loudly. Li Chen asked, What actually happened? This slave had investigated earlier and found many differing testimonies. However, right before Your Highness returned to the estate, Lakeside View House summoned the estate's physician. Young Master Chi had suddenly caught a high fever and fell unconscious. In an instant, Li Chen stopped in place. Then his strides grew longer as he rushed to Lakeside View House. When he arrived, he found Chi Yunruo laying in bed, face red and eyes screwed tight. Li Chen furrowed his brow. How did this happen? In a soft voice, Lulan said, Today Consort Ji sent some people over. They said very unpleasant things. At that time, Master had not been feeling well. After forcing them to leave, he did not even have the strength to lift a teacup anymore. As soon as this slave had summoned physician Lu, Master already fainted. Li Chen sat down at the side of the bed. Reached out to stroke Qi Yunruo's forehead. His face was so hot it could scare someone. As Li Chen looked at the several layers of covers, he asked physician Lu, how is little Qi? The estate's physician Lu bowed. This lowly one has asked the maid servants who attend to this young master about his diet and health. Afterward, this lowly one has found out what caused this young master's sickness. Part of it should be exhaustion. Also, he was too angry today. These two factors coupled and quickly caused him to fall ill. Now the most troublesome thing is that this young master cannot take medicine while unconscious, and as such his fever could not be lowered. Li Chen said faintly, go and prepare the medicine for now. Understood. This lowly one will return. The people in the house did not dare to speak. Nanny Song, who was currently outside the residence, had a face full of worry. She summoned a low-ranked servant girl and gave her some instructions in a soft voice. Their previous plan had been for the eldest miss to take back the management of the household from third young master in the future. If the eldest miss was not feeling well later on, then Nanny Song would assist her. Could her own capabilities not compare with that disrespectful and annoying brats? Nanny Song was considered one of the princess consort's closest people. What a pity that Nanny Cheng, who had come from the imperial palace, did not regard her highly. She would need to show those people some of her capabilities. That she could hold the power. That she was higher than them by a level. Too bad that currently, Nanny Song did not dare to think such things. She hoped that Consort Ji would forcefully deal with this disrespectful and annoying brat. In the current situation, whether it be him out of luck or the other party was anyone's guess. Nanny Song had heard Eunuch Xia's words. But she did not feel they were wrong. He had that kind of mother, yet he didn't want people to talk about him like that. He was just a little cheap spawn that was lying to himself. Meanwhile, Li Chen held the bowl of medicine with one hand and stirred it softly with the other. Qi Yunruo's lips were closed. After waiting for the medicine to cool, Li Chen took a sip of it and bent down. After Qi Nikan heard the news from a low-ranked servant girl, she hesitated before saying, Help me put on some clothes. We're going to Lakeside View House. Yes. As soon as she was fully dressed, she boarded her palanquin, her expression calm throughout the trip. Once they had arrived at Lakeside View House, Chi Nikan used a servant girl's hand for support as she went inside, one hand supporting her abdomen as she walked. The moment Lulan and Li Yiso caught a glimpse of Chi Nikan, they were shocked. Curtsying, they said, paying respects to Her Highness, the Princess Consort. The corners of Chi Nikan's eyes glistened with tears. How is my younger brother? End chapter.